<laughs> That's so crazy. That's fun. Comes That's down. Fun. Old school. Right? <laughs> right? Old school. <laughs> so this here was basically a rocket. <laughs> rocket on my head just pummeling the shit out of me. This isn't a scene that takes money. As long as you have like the, the creativity, sure. you have your scene. This change right here is brilliant. Oh, so good. Welcome back to another episode of Stuntmen React. We are here with James Young, who is an action designer and stunt performer extraordinaire. You might know James from uh, some of these obscure little indie films, Avengers Endgame, Captain America Civil War, this French cult hit, Guardians of the Galaxy. James, I've been wanting you to be on this couch for such a long time, <laughs> and I'm so happy we're able to fit in your busy schedule. Thanks, man. You know? Yeah, you know, James, maybe tell us a little bit about these films you've been working on. Yeah, I have been very fortunate to action design, coordinate, and secondly direct some of these fun movies. I've done about 10 movies for Marvel now. Wow. Yeah, it's a train. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you have a lot of stories. Ooh, I have a few. Well, let's just jump right in. This is probably one of the most fun sets me and you have been yeah. on. And this is probably one of the funniest scenes I've seen you ever do. So let's watch it and then I want you to tell everybody the story. Oh my god. Of yeah. it, you doing it and how it felt afterwards. This thing here, this is me on the left and Steven on the right. <laughs> so this here was basically a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket on my head, just pummeling the shit out of me. And I'm basically just snapping my head backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, and then doing a face plant. <clears throat> the funny thing is you do this scene for four, five hours, and then you got to shoot the rest of the scene. Oh man. So the rest of the scene, if you continue it, just watch what I'm doing. I'm asleep. I am there as Rocket's pedestal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we share methods. <laughs> We share That's methods. me laying down like a pencil. <laughs> so I had to sit there for two days, <laughs> like that, while they did Michael Rooker and Sean Gunn, who plays Rocket. Sean was sitting on my back for some of them, <laughs> like that. You actually see him in, in the actual Sean, scene. Sean is craggling. There he is. There he Sean. is. So Sean does all the kind of performance capture and movement for Rocket. He'll sit down in like a weird squat with his legs crossed and be like, hey, guy. He'll be actually play the character <laughs> for all of them. So you just went from a half a day of snapping your head crazy and then you've got to sit like this for two days on a cold sound stage <laughs> i've been through brick walls i've been through windows i've been hit by cars but my god that next day hurt i had batman neck for oh, months man. i was right very bad so there's something to be said like honestly we often joke about playing a dead body can get you injured because <laughs> you go about doing all this work and then all of a sudden you've got to stay cold and still it's a funny scene to be a part of i i remember the pain more than anything <laughs> that was a fun day too. It's just incredible. Such ah, so, so fun. Rocket's so fun. my favorite character from Guardians, 100%. Like, it's Facts. all about him. It's great. And I'll be honest, the Guardians of the Galaxy, as Guy knows, probably less work for a stunt designer. James knows exactly what he wants. James storyboards the whole movie before he goes in. So he's got a great idea. So when I go into design, he shows me what he's got and I'm just basically just adding a small piece. That's it. It's really just what James wants. He knows exactly what he wants. So it's easy, it's fun. It's such a great crew mm. for Guardians. James has great people around him, so truly a joy to work with him. That's and so cool. uh, yeah, it's, it's, these movies are just fun, man. But again, you go into that kind of different aspect of action design. This is space, green screen, wires, and kind of more ability driven. Whereas, you know, Captain America, he's slinging meat. <laughs> This is sort of the stranger. Yeah. James, you were the one that put me on to this anime. Yeah. Film. And this fight scene is to this day one of my favorite fight scenes. I know it's one of your yeah. favorite fight scenes. This yeah. is like if you guys want to see a sword fight, this is a sword fight. The word anime, I mean, we're all nerds here. We love all the animes. But I think to a lot of the general populace is anime is all the, yeah, all the funny, like crazy psychedelic stuff. Right. It's not that anymore. The thing that I like about this anime, it's not on that kind of way you think anime is. This right. fight, you could do this live action. There's a lot of cinematic shots in it and there's a lot of great moments. They even, to me, there's Western style cinematography in this. You're gonna see an Empire of the Strikes Back shot. Mm. You're gonna see some shots that are just phenomenal. Like, look at this. Here's your just bits of choreography, get the crowd going right. Now this shot is Empire Strikes Back, ready? There's Vader and Luke. <laughs> You're at the break, the first break of the fight. You can go back and watch that and you're about to see where that happened. And then one of the really good reveal. Oh, 
Uh, and uh. you can go back and actually see those close little hits. Foreshadowing, right? right? Foreshadowing, you get your break. The music's coming up, you know, you're pumping everything. This is where it's like the standoff. That was act one. Now you're in act two. Mm -hmm. Most fights should have three acts. Yes. Right? It's a scene, it's a story. This piece right here, my favorite part of the fight. Breathes out, EI does straight to cut, bang. Yeah. Comes That's down, bad. old school, right? <laughs> right? Old school. <laughs> Dude, like the strategic frames, you yeah. get one frame of the look, yes. right? But it's, it's set up in a way where it, like your mind's memory, the short-term memory of visual that you have, like holds that frame in your mind a little bit longer. I think what anime does is it subconsciously programs you in some of their scenes because it's art. You don't, you only have twenty-four right. frames. I mean, when I worked in animation, yeah. the rules that you wait, have wait, James, you worked in animation? I did. I used to <laughs> work in animation. I did storyboard animatics. I've, uh, I started on Jackie Chan Adventures, Batman Beyond. Wait, really? Yeah, doing wow, storyboards. That's so cool. Yeah, Dragon <laughs> Tales, Cliff of the Big Red Dog. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the fight scenes in Clifford are pretty great. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the fight. I highly recommend anyone to check this whole movie out. It's just beautifully done. If you want one of the best animated fights of the last 45 years, Arcane. Eco versus Jinx. You look at this fight right here, the dark colors, and this is what I love. It's not about the fight, it's about what you're painting. They haven't seen each other since kids. They used to fight as kids to train. Everything about this fight, I'm getting goosebumps right now, is just perfection to me. This change right here is brilliant because you're going back in time. Everything's about time in this fight, and I love that the clock is a big thing. This is where innocence kicks in. So now you're programming your audience something different. You've come in dark, but now you're showing them this, and you're enjoying it. Oh, so good. And I love the way they did it kind of stop motion just to signify time. The biggest thing, I think, for a lot of fight scenes is, is like this. What's your artistic aesthetic? What are you trying to tell the story in a different way? The hardest thing to do as an action designer is take every scene and think about what is that little extra piece? Right. You, know, you know, if we're doing a flashback scene, what are you doing? It goes into that echo fight. A cool graphic narrative that is going to drive it as well. Graphic edit, they're all the tool to push people to subconsciously get what you want. But the real kick of this fight comes when you come back to reality. Right. Beautiful, beautiful twist. And then just absolutely bludgeons her. And I was watching this like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, gee, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> and it comes from innocence per beauty to absolute, I will kill you. One of the important things for fights is to take the audience on an emotional ride. The ability to make the audience expect something and then rip the expectation away from them is it just pulls them so much further into your story. It's it's a great technique. From a story construction scene, it's so hard to do because you obviously need to get people attached to those characters. You're only going to expect the character to win if it's like a main character. Of course, right? yeah. But you also need to build your story so that you can then kill your main character and not just break your entire story. Yes. Not your main character, but one of the main characters. Yeah. Again, action design in a different aspect, but you're telling the same story. You're right. subverting expectations. You're building a character. It's, there's an aesthetic to it. So to me, you're emotionally investing people. This will be the greatest war the world has ever seen. We need the greatest warrior. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay, so James, this is like one of the things that you definitely use to teach people. Yeah. So what I want, and I think the audience wants, is for you to walk us through this amazing fight and break it down how you would break it down. Yeah. yeah. Great shot. <laughs> and you know how hard it is to fight with full spears? Let me tell you. Yeah. This is some of the hardest work you can do. Like a shield. heavy shield, the timing, the spear. There's a lot that goes into this. End or be always weapons. Hardest thing to do. Because you know, to teach an actor to throw hands, is, everyone knows their hands. Right. But to put a weapon in someone's hand, and you often hear you've got to have the weapon in the extension of yourself. That's mm -hmm. true. In order yes. to actually do well with the weapon, it needs to be a part of you. Not to mention making it look like it's snappy and fast when right. spears are not snappy and fast. I mean, any weapon, you know, like any weapon you're using, the hardest thing to sell on camera is intent. It's like if I'm throwing a hook punch over your head, I've got to accelerate it to show the intent. I want to take your head off. It's a little bit more dangerous with a weapon, right? So it's a little bit more involved in it. <laughs> 
You're constantly getting problem solving in every single move too. You are. He's gonna stab here, I don't have a guard. Psych, if I twist this way, mm -hmm. I do. If I put my shield here and I do a cool viper strike with my sword. Yep. <laughs> it makes sense for my character. So then what you gotta look at as well is look at the way they're moving. One thing that you gotta lock on to is like what they're going into, right? Hector's, you know, he made a mistake by killing the cousin. You can see his heart is almost conflicted in this fight. Achilles is angry and he's also been built up the whole movie as to being this incredible fighter. So that as the audience, we know, mm -hmm. right? Hector just knows the myth of Achilles, right. right? The way this fight is performed, Hector is a little bit more wild, a little bit more defensive. Brad is doing a cutter. He's literally pop, 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 boom. He's very rudimentary and very set in his movement pattern. Well, that tells me it's a better warrior. It's someone that literally moving per beat, knows everything, he's doing it like he's done it before. Hector, all wild. Yep. Achilles is in the pocket, he's toying with him. There's a moment where he slaps the blade away <laughs> and it's so disrespectful, it's so small. It just, it says a lot to me, he's, this is not a fight. He's picking him to pieces, he's making a- There it is. Fucking, yeah. yep. Get the <laughs> out of here, right? This is basically breaking morale of a city. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love this fight. Again, all these emotions of the anger, the uncertainty, the prior idea of who you're fighting, there's everything in this fight. The kill, save of the kill, he literally just bludgeoned him down in front of the whole family. He broke yeah. the morale of the city and then the best of up part of this fight, he just drags the body away. <laughs> that wasn't a fight between two men. Like, they, this was yeah. literally like your movie. That's the movie. That's right. the movie right there. You know, also talking about like the accessibility of filmmaking. This isn't a scene that takes money. As long as you have like the That's creativity, true. you have your scene. Yeah. It's two dudes Fine. in a dirt spot. Yeah. That's yep. it. That's it. That's all you need. I mean, yeah, there's a castle in the background, but you don't need the castle. Nope. You just be two dudes in a field. Yep. The biggest thing is the crowd and the dudes. That's yeah. it. You right. don't need and the, the story. Yeah. Right. The, story's it's just, the story is the yeah. biggest thing. Yeah. yeah, grab a pencil and a piece of paper. You got your story. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Fun fact James is actually a lord in England, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and I am either going to become a lord, a baron, or a duke, or a duchess. Or a duchess. <laughs> you get to pick. Comment below. And based on how many subscriptions we get off of this video, I have to become that, and that'll be my title on this show of Stunt Memory Acts. It's binding. James promised. <laughs> James promised he would use his powers, his lordship, <laughs> to bestow upon Guy his rightful lands. His <laughs> So yeah, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right, you know, this? a little palate cleanser here. Just hanging out with Freddie and Matt when we were shooting our Punch for Punch episode. And I'm always happy when I can show a clip to someone that might like it and they haven't seen it or heard of it, heard of it before. Okay. So, Freddie, thanks for the recommendation. <laughs> I'm now using it on the show to like flex as if I have like really great taste <laughs> in action scenes. Let's watch it. I want to hear what you guys think. <laughs> Such a Japanese moment here. Yeah. <laughs> Calm before the storm. That's so crazy. It's fun. It's a good comp shot. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. That's a Charlie Chaplin shot there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the double grab. Yeah. Unexpected. This part's sick. Oh, nice. That's cool. Sick. Oh, that sucks. Oh, gosh. That was two wire gags. That sucks. Oh! That's fun. Yeah. That's real fun. I just see the logistics of that. That's bananas. <laughs> well, it is. You can follow the action very clearly. Nice. No, very well done. Do you know what it helps you though? It's not an actor. It's oh, stunt guy. Stunt guy. Yeah. Because you got the mask. Got on. the mask on. Helps you. That's true. That's why Shang Chi was so good because Simil put a lot of the working. All you want as an action designer is your actor to give you as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to craft a fight based on what my actor can't do and cut, 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 cut. Mm -hmm. You know, you want you want to have the freedom. You want right. to have the freedom. Oi! Whoa, that's a fun stuff. Yo, Douglas Fairbanks. That's <laughs> nice. Oh, things aren't looking good. He's in trouble. How's he gonna get out of this one? Oh, the grenade. Nice. Oh, sick. Nice. That's good special effects there with that oh, rig. Yeah. That is really well built. And yeah, seeing the, the camera on it as it falls over. Yeah. And just the gravity shift. Like you can't fake gravity no. shifting. That's sick. <laughs> the, yeah. the effects there, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just <laughs> <stab> him up? <laughs> nah, that is sick. That's cool. That's really cool. 
You're selling the motion so well. It is well done, man. Yeah, really well done. All right, that's it. That's really cool, man. So this little sequence where he's falling down yeah. between like the stairwell and the side of the building, it looks so intense. Like imagine that's a lot of scraped elbows, right? It is. We yeah. did something similar on Civil War. We had uh, Kofi, who was Dublin Chadwick at the time, when they were fighting in the college, he got thrown into something like that. We just dropped him straight down. Uh, it was just a straight gap. That's really cool. You can, using that space is something different. Mm -hmm. I think with action scenes, we're always trying to do something different. So right. environment can always help, but this is really well done. This is really well done. I really like that whole sequence. Yeah, like they're putting themselves into tough physical spaces and hard to film spaces. Like that's the thing, there's like fights in bathrooms, there's fights yeah. on the floor. They're between like a stairwell and the side of a building. It's like, how are you gonna squeeze a camera in there? Yeah. Let alone get a good angle. Right. It's also the size of your camera as well, you know? Yeah. Like for the lot of stuff we shoot on, you're looking at Sony Venices and Lexa Minis, it's insane. So they obviously bungeed the camera. That's just some great rigging. That really is just a good sure. spot to do a fight, some great rigging. You can definitely tell they had a good rigging team because not only do they do oh, this yeah. scene, but then they do the scaffolding scene, which is just both of them are like flexes, you know? Right. Oh yeah, that's bananas. A lot of great action is a good dance between your stunt team, your VFX team, and your special effects team. Mm -hmm. yep. It's usually all in one that you're trying to come together and do this. You know, to wrap things up, do you have like just an old fight scene that you've done that's on YouTube? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So what this was is after I finished Winter Soldier, I had that really bad injury. I wasn't allowed to work for six months. I was just training, trying to get better. And I finally got back to a, a place where I could actually start throwing hands again. So we just went down to Malibu for a day. So it was just a good practice fight. And it's, you know, always hard to do with knives. And we tried to like, did a little bit of the hunted style, just trying to make it a little bit kind of realistic, but yeah. playing around with it at the same time. No, that's not realistic at all. <laughs> yeah, but this is, you know, done on the fly. This is like yeah, us right. coming up with a choreo, Manny shooting it and directing us and just getting us back into it. So these are always really fun, but this is to us, this is training. This is right. not, this is, this is us how you would train as a stuntman. Go to the gym, practice the heavy bad, practice your techniques, but the real worth is getting together with people and shooting the fight and criticizing yourself. So everybody out there who thinks Making movies is inaccessible. Here is a YouTube video with freaking Guy and James in the woods yeah. in their like jeans. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> a lot of the times I give homework to people who say, look, you want to know how Jackie fights? Go take a Jackie fight and recreate shot for shot. You don't understand. Yeah. Like that's literally right. it. That's one of the best ways you can practice yes. anything. Like that's what we're doing for like visual effects. Like we pull up the Matrix lobby scene. Sam and I made the Matrix lobby scene shot for shot when we were in like yeah. junior high school. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks really janky. My run up the wall is me on a green screen just being rotated. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but, but that's, but that's amazing. Like, you know, you're problem solving. Yeah. You're right. learning. It's like, okay, this shot's needed for this beat. This shot's needed for this Speed. okay this is a setup here that's different from this and you really learn how to make it like if you can't make a fight scene shot for shot you're not gonna be able to make a, a cinema level fight scene on your right. own without you know having a, yeah, a template 100 percent. just shooting the thousands and thousands of previews that i've shot is you learn you know working with the vfx team i know like you know where angles are gonna go better you just you learn just you gotta do it one of my favorite quotes is from james cameron you got a phone look i'm a director mm -hmm. everything else is your rate that's it. <laughs> That's it. But this is what you can do to help you. Like, go take a fight scene, recreate it shot for shot. You'll understand the why they did it like this, what sells, what doesn't sell. And then also what you'll learn, which is more important, is when you can put an actor in and when you can't. Because that's us doing it. But there's definitely four or five of these shots I wouldn't put an actor in. You know, like, it's a lot of puzzle pieces that you're really coming together. But the first step is picking up the camera. Yeah, I mean, when we're hiring at Corridor, hey, pro tip, if we, when we do our next hiring round at some point, when we look at people's reels, it's not just the work that they've done. We also like to see what work did they do for fun. Yeah. Because if somebody mm -hmm. doesn't have any work in their reel that they've just done on their own, like how much do you truly love it? Right. If you're not yeah, doing it when, when there's no money involved, true. and like you're not doing work that's not going in your reel when there's no money involved, like is the passion really there? Exactly. That's yeah. facts. That's true, man. Absolutely. That's true, man. As you can see by watching this whole episode, James is super cool. He does a bunch of awesome work. You can see more of it on his Instagram, JU10. There's a link in the description below. It's on the screen. Go check it out if you want to see more of these clips. All right, James. I want to get you back on the couch, but I know I'm not going to see you for another four years. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, it, won't, it won't be like that. It won't be like that. I'll be, I'll be happy to come back. You guys have been great. So thank you so much. That's it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for joining us.